Okie dokie, I guess I'll just go ahead and get started. Okay, so um, just a, a few housekeeping uh, reminders. Um, I don't know how new everyone is to using Zoom, if there's some new folks in there, just so you know, if you do want to use audio at some point to ask a question, you may need to um, uh, click around your, your uh, microphone and make sure that you allow your computer to um, use audio. And if you have a bad connection, it's possible to have um, basically use your phone for an audio as well. You can look that up if you want. But um, anyway, uh, I'm going to go ahead and um, get rolling a little bit. Um, so if anybody has any questions, if you can hold them till the end, that will be helpful. Um, and then if you can try to just stay muted throughout the presentation, although if you have like a burning question, I won't mind if you need to interrupt. Um, if you uh, would like to support this uh, wonderful organization, A1 Lab Arts, that is supporting me and, and my artwork and my exhibition today, then I definitely recommend visiting the, um, the link um, a1labarts.com slash join donate, hashtag donate. Um, if you go over there, you can just donate automatically right there. Um, and then if you haven't had a chance to see the actual virtual exhibit, I highly recommend that. It's basically um, kind of like Google Street View where you can kind of, it's almost like a, you're walking around in a three-dimensional looking space and then you can click on the points of interest and then actually kind of like see the, the paintings and things like that. Okay. So I'm going to kind of tell a little bit of the story of the evolution of my artwork, such as to end where where we are right now, which is um, during COVID-19 quarantine lockdown time. Um, but uh, before I get to that point, there's a few uh, precursors to that that are going to be kind of important. So I'll just go over that a little bit too. Um, by the way, my name is Emily Schleiner. I'm an artist and this exhibition is called The Story Keeps Changing Deep Travels. Um, and part of that is because um, the nature of making artwork during COVID-19 for me has meant that I'm doing a little bit more psychological traveling. And the other reason for that is that I have put up a whole bunch of photographs that remind me of actual real world travels from the past. And that is also featured in the exhibit. So it's kind of a mixture of, of travels and the metaphor mixed with the reality is kind of like a helpful tool for me to to understand you know how, how I'm thinking about things right now okay so what I'm going to go over here is like I said I'll, I'll just touch on the past a little bit just to give us some context um, and then I wanted to share with everyone a little bit my um, experience of of yeah, my enjoyment of rivers and flowing and, and a little bit of kind of a, a spiritual worldview that I've been enjoying more recently. Um, and then also the, the kind of existential concerns that have come up during the lockdown um, have been interesting to think about in context. Um, and then finally, I will uh, show you a project that has to do with the bath and I'll get to that eventually too and then we'll do some Q&A at the end if anyone has any questions about anything if your microphone is not working feel free to use the chat um, you can uh, if you move your mouse up you can get to the top of your screen and uh, navigate around and click to the chat section and then you should be able to enter your questions there
Okay, so just to kind of give everyone a little bit of background about me, um, I have historically really enjoyed making more ephemeral public art, meaning I like to, I have historically like to take my artwork to public places and then do almost like performance work and then remove it again. And um, a lot of times that ends up meaning that the documentation becomes like the, the focus in, uh, after the work is completed. Um, but a lot of times it really is a uh, very singular event that has a kind of magic to it. And then if people miss it, they just missed it. And if they saw it, it really was kind of special and, um, you know, fleeting. And the other thing that I've really experimented a lot with is video sculpture. And I wrote an academic paper about that in, I think, 2015, maybe 2014, uh, that really, uh, I think I was really trying to make the case that video sculpture is really its own niche area. And I have friends who make video sculpture. And um, I think it's, I think it's really, I don't know, something special, um, but it does take a lot of um, planning and um, technical kind of um, troubleshooting and things like that. So um, that's been uh, an interesting journey for me. Um, and then, I really took a different turn for a long time. And although I did do, I have done art in the last decade, I definitely have done less of it. Um, a lot of the, what I've been focusing has been on has been making websites and I've mostly self-taught that. Um, and then I've, um, I've gone back to school to learn a lot of um, technical things, including a lot of uh, programming and development. And then uh, now I actually work full time uh, for the state in IT. And I enjoy that a lot. And I actually find that there's a lot of opportunity for me to be creative, uh, not in the more conventional way, or in, in a more conventional way, but it's still very rewarding for me. Um, and I do enjoy feeling like I lift people up. Uh, you know, using technology, which is kind of like a thread for me throughout all this. So, um, so that takes us a little closer to now. Um, probably last year, I would say that I really started having a regular habit of seeing um, the Sacramento River on my way to work. Um, and I did that every morning and every morning I would enjoy it and meditate and take pictures. Um, so I ended up with a quite a large collection of, of pictures of the river. And around that same time, I really, um, I think in part because of my uh, more deliberate focus on learning technology, programming, uh, web development, I actually really wanted to uh, focus on uh, woman empowering messages. And so I really uh, focused on the river as a place that I could really um, think about these kinds of thoughts and um, have a kind of um, very kind of healing um, idea of myself as a woman and that my um, my skills and my my abilities are like maybe not just uh, you know acceptable in the world, but maybe um, you know valued, and that my um, yeah. So anyway, my 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 you you can kind of get a sense that I was working in a very male dominated environment, which is true. So um, that, that was really helpful for me to have this time with the river every day. And so I had all these pictures. Um, they uh, very 
peaceful and, and mean a lot to me. Um, and, uh, and we'll come back to that at the end uh, as well. Um, I, I also was working very hard around this time um, because um, it, it's just very competitive. And I also, um, I happen to have a learning disability, which is um, something that I've had my whole life. Uh, but around this time, something new was happening, which was that I was um, for the first time really doing in-depth testing and getting um, advice and counseling about that issue. Um, I also, I had some personal challenges, um, family illness, um, that really, um, um, was kind of a bottom for me and really pushed me to do a lot of personal growth and questioning. Um, I also, um, felt that I connected with a lot of friendships around my interest in, uh, woman-focused earth-based spirituality practices. And that has been extremely helpful and important to me um, as I've gone through and continue to learn and grow. Even now, um, I'm so uh, glad that I've met a lot of wonderful people. And so anyway, um, for many reasons, the river was important to me. And I, and I, at home, even before the pandemic, I started to make these paintings that um, had a, a, they were very different from the previous work I'd done. First of all, they were paintings. And second of all, they, they had a lot of flowing feelings in them, a lot of um, allowing of chaos in a kind of, uh, in a, in the structure of, of a canvas, really. Um, and so these, these types of paintings started to feel very important and cathartic and, and difficult to describe actually, like why they felt important and good to me. But this was um, one of the first ones I made. And I made a few others like that. And then I created this large painting. It's actually eight feet by eight feet. It's quite big. And all of the sections of the painting are divided up into specific sections. Like I used basically big dams of duct tape to cordon off each you know, zone. And then that allowed me to have like a, a kind of, you know, it was definitely different colors. The colors were interacting, but there's a lot of structure in there. So the, um, the different parts of basically what's a landscape painting get to come and, and be realized there. And what we're really looking at here is a river that is receding into the distance. And then the landscape is on the, the sorry, the bank is on the left and right. And then we have the sky up there. And then we have this kind of mysterious like you know, sort of thing in the middle that maybe it's like a moon or something. And really what that is to me, uh, it's something really specific. And I'm actually gonna talk about that a little bit later, but uh, we'll just keep that in mind for the moment. Um, so anyway, uh, I was making these paintings. They meant a lot to me. I didn't know how to articulate why. And I, I'm not sure that I still do, but anyway, uh, now that the, you know, we've gone through this experience of COVID-19 as a whole human species, basically. Um, I'm, I'm having some really, I think, interesting thoughts about a lot of things. Um, and I started asking myself certain questions, like would I have regrets if I died suddenly? Uh, what have I learned or done right in my, life, in my life? I think as a person, I tend to be a little bit um, like self-critical and harsh. And I think around this time, I was starting to wonder, what have I actually done right in my life? I'm actually kind of curious. I would really like to have more insight into that so that I can remember that and enjoy life. Because what if it's short, you know? <laughs> you never know. If you could get COVID or something will go wrong. Um, and then also, how can I keep growing while I'm at home? 
and then still, you know, keep my work schedule and try to keep a semblance of normalcy. And what I ended up doing was really focusing on psychotherapy. I really, you know, focused in on that in my life. And then I also took a class on tarot cards. And so you may be asking yourself, like, well, what's the point of tarot cards? Aren't those just like silly things for predicting the future? Well, it's interesting. Um, they are um, a whole lot of um, basically representations of human uh, frailty and wonder in my mind. And so uh, people can use these in different ways. And that's kind of what I'm learning about. And, I, and I'm in no way an expert, so I can't really say too much about them. But I will say that um, they're divided into four, four sections and that well, really five sections. The four sections are the, the different suits um, and they, they focused on different aspects of human uh, evolution. Kind of some of them are more airy and intellectual and some of them are more earthy and about being ambitious. Um, and then there's the ones in the middle, and those are what people have traditionally referred to as trump cards, although many people call them triumph cards these days. Um, and those are supposed to represent the, the kind of unfolding of our true nature as humans, like in our, in our journey to ascending as human beings. It's kind of a spiritual, spiritual idea for those ones. And so um, because of this class, I had an assignment to um, be creative and think about what some of the um, cards meant to me. And, and what I ended up doing was taking that a step further and basically creating my own triumph cards because I really wanted to focus on the topic of each card and then see where in my life I felt that this card was represented. And so I did that to some extent. I think I was fairly ambitious when I kind of announced the show because I really felt um, inspired. Um, and I, uh, I created a, a fair amount of them. I created 10 of them, which I'm pretty happy with. And um, they, are all in a uh, kind of a mixture of time frames, depending on where in my life I felt a certain feeling or had a certain perspective shift. And um, so, but then I took them and I, and I kind of made them chronological. So it became then more of like this hero's journey idea of like, okay, when I was young, I had this perception and then it shifted into this other perception. So I'm, I'm not going to go through today and, and tell the entire story of my life through these cards because that would be a lot. Um, but I will just tell you a few of them just so you can get a feel for how, how it went with me and how um, the story played out visually for me. So this one is called the High Priestess. The High Priestess uh, card, the tarot card is this, um, it's essentially a card that uh, shows a woman and she's wise and she's powerful and she's kind of drawing down wisdom from above. And when I saw that card, what I thought of was my mother and she, was a very wise and interesting person. She passed away when I was uh, 18. Um, so I, in some ways I have a kind of idealized version of her in my mind because I think it's really common when people have a parent that passes away when they're young, they're a little idealistic about it. But um, she, uh, when I was young, I have a very specific memory of her walking with me through the Smithsonian Air and Space Museum <laughs> and, um, and having her uh, with me inspiring a lot of wonder in the skies. And she also happened to be a um, early modern uh, academic 
and also a poet. So she was an interesting person um, who had a lot of interest in history, but also the future. And um, so uh, anyway, I think she really conveyed a lot of her her wisdom from above that she had to me. And that's uh, in the middle of the picture is actually uh, a picture of her holding me as a baby. So you can kind of see that she's sort of looking down at this like Buddhist statue and or maybe the swirling, you know, vortex with the plane and the skies and the, um, you know, whatever other things are happening in there. Um, uh, and then this card here, I'm just gonna kind of keep rolling through. This card is the death card. And this of course is a card about her death when she passed away. And what we're looking at here is essentially me as a young person looking at her after she has passed. And I see her creativity and wisdom, uh, you know, basically we're seeing some um, maybe cattle from the Lascaux cave swimming around in some mysterious pool here. And uh, this kind of mysterious thinking was some of what I felt that she passed on to me. Um, and her death, I felt, was a kind of transformational experience for me because I I, I suddenly understood, I think, you know, while she's alive, she's just mom. And then when she's, when she's no longer there, it becomes a, um, a moment of realizing, oh, there was all so much going on inside. Um, and I see a, you know, a kind of um, bigger pattern being revealed by her absence. And so I think that awareness of, of this wisdom is, is growing out of my head, out of the top of my head. And you can kind of see that skull above me. And it, I think really this is like a combination of the death and the moon card really. Although I have to confess that the skull at, at the top there is actually a Neanderthal skull. So it's that, that was not my intention, but it's really just such a beautiful image of a skull that I put it there. Um, so anyway, uh, maybe that will mean something more later on, who knows. So this card here is a card about strength. And um, you'll notice that there's uh, this uh, figure below that has this a graduation outfit on like educational outfit and and then there's a figure climbing up a cliff up there and there is um, some kind of ancient carving of some maybe a, a woman or a man with some um, maybe some bighorn sheep or something some kind of big beast holding on to them and what this to me means is um, I, I just think of, of my own strength. And, and you know, it's, it's, it's funny to talk about all this because really it, it, people really, it's just, I'm, I'm always a self-deprecating person. It's pretty standard for me to have a pretty ironic twist whenever I'm talking about myself or my thoughts or achievements or anything. But I will say that, especially when it comes to my educational journey and my challenges learning, that it has been a struggle for me and that the amount of, of progress and learning and strength and the, uh, you know, just putting one foot in front of the other through these, these difficult times has, made it possible um, for me to scale some pretty uh, challenging um, types of, of, of work situations and, and learning situations. And so I'm really, um, you know, pretty excited to um, have this uh, representation of this to look at 
basically. And the, um, the carving that you're seeing at the top is essentially, um, it's from a archeology span uh, journal that I subscribe to. And essentially the, um, the carving is um, the newly discovered carving. And for those of you who are familiar with ancient civilizations, there's um, a, a group of people, the ancient Sumerians, and they, um, they essentially are, have, are well known for having a kind of similar style of artwork. They're one of the earliest civilizations who have writing. So they're really well known for that. And um, there's a new dig that is happening apparently maybe a couple hundred miles from the location of ancient Sumeri, Sumeria that uh, they, ha they have discovered it and they, they found a whole lot of writing that they don't know how to read yet. Um, but they have found some beautiful, beautiful old, you know, carvings and artworks and things like that. And that is, that is what this is from. And what it is, is it looks like somebody who is calming down some, some beast. Someone is, is very um, sweetly and calmly sitting there and, um, you know, holding on to and sort of charming these, these large threatening beasts with big horns. And that's how I feel when I am managing myself on the inside, when I'm working through these difficult moments of learning as I'm corralling my inner beasts into to continuing on the, the climb and keeping on, keeping on basically. So that's something that I, um, uh, yeah, it, it feels very interesting to see it represented in, in this form. Um, so this one is the magician, and this is this is me um, acknowledging my um, progress too. Um, let's see the magician. One my notes. Yeah, the magician communicates ideas and vision through skillful means gained through learning and practice. So that's, um, that is related to the, the um, strength part. Like the first came the strength and now is the part where I, I get to feel actualized with the work. And, and it feels to me like kind of like honoring all the effort. You know, so that's a that's also another kind of like personal psychological moment of just acknowledging the different phase of my life. Okay, so now that we have gone through some of this is this is all the cards that I will share at the moment. There's there's more of them. There's more stories. There's more background. Um, I shared mostly the positive ones. Some of them are kind of painful memories, but they actually, to me, are uplifting because they they highlight some kind of you know shift, or I can see them in a way where I don't feel um, the you know trauma or or shame that I felt in the past, and I have a more uplifted perspective now. It depends, but. Overall, it's actually quite quite the self-help project for me in some sense. Okay, so um, I'm going to switch gears and I'm going to talk about this um, this piece, which is actually in my bathroom and it's still currently glowing and blinking. And um, Essentially, in that bathroom is a whole lot of pictures surrounding that bath of the Sacramento River. And to me, this is um, kind of a big deal because I didn't really realize that the water that I drink in my house um, actually is from the Sacramento River, the very same river that I have had my my um, deep connection with for you know a couple of years now, 
but I, I, I finally realized that at some point that um, this is the same water <laughs> from the river. And although I'm not commuting to work every day because we're all working from home here, which is a privilege, by the way, I realized that um, um, I miss the river because I don't go there. Uh, but I still have a connection to it, which makes me so happy. And um, it, it really um, is, is quite a meaningful experience for me. Um, and for me, the, uh, the significance of it in part is the feeling that, and I'll just you know read my own quote, that the river in its wholeness, in its uniqueness, its ecosystem, its regular visitors and seasonal variation has, uh, has me experiencing the, the location as though it is a person. For me, that also means that bathing in this water is a profound experience. So, um, so yeah, that's very interesting to me because um, I kind of feel like my own, um, my own um, kind of care for the river somehow circled, circled back into a place of care for me when I take a bath now, which is something that, that feels very good to me. Um, so I think that's about it for me today. I really didn't want this to be a whole long presentation, but I, I did want to um, I did want to get a chance to um, uh, just like go through and showcase kind of like the the shifting uh, place where my creative creativity is going these days, uh, which I feel really lucky to have got to to, to do today. So thank you all for for listening. Um, did anyone have any any questions or comments or thoughts that you want to share or, or projects that you're working on or thinking about that you wanted to talk about? Hi, Em. Hey, DJ. How are you? Good. How are you? I'm doing well. I want to hear more about the bathtub installation. Like, how did you create that? Because I'm noticing wires and things, and wires and water. Oh, you know, sure. Don't typically mix. <laughs> oh yeah, good point. No, that's okay. So that's a good question. This, uh, I used a little bit of um, of uh, trickery here because there is a wire. It's coming out of here, out of the tub, and it's plugging in over here. And what this is is a string of LED lights that goes um, around the bathtub there and um, there's a kind of like a sheet of drop cloth I guess like one of, I will say by the way that like all of the supplies for all the projects that I've done have pretty much come from inside our house <laughs> and that was like one of the funny things about like doing this type of work in COVID, COVID times so um, I just took a drop cloth from the garage that I use for, for painting, you know, to keep the floors from getting paint on them. And then I, I, put, uh, I put that over that strip of LED. It goes around, the LED strip goes circles all the right way around the bathtub. And then there's toilet paper around the edge, keeping it from being distinct, you know, points of light in each spot. And then um, the, the drop cloth is like a, you know, like a sheen that's going over the whole thing. And then the, the, the face in there is, that's a digital picture frame. And that has pictures of me in the bath. I was like, that's a legitimate bath that I had that day. I was having an awesome bath. I felt very deep and connected and peaceful. And I just took, snapped a couple pictures of my face. Um, while I was in there and um, apparently that's what I look like when I'm having one of those um, kind of uh, more connected experiences in the bathtub so um, yeah there you go um, I, I think that I might 
um, stop sharing this and just quickly um, bring up the actual um, tour really quick so I can kind of, you know, be on the same page with everyone about that. So the um, go to this is the bathtub scene here, and this is this these are all the um, pictures that are on the wall in there, and they are uh, just prints of the river, and you can kind of just like feel how blue that water is, and how how it's change how it changes. Sometimes it's so peaceful, and then other times it's you know quite quite busy, quite quite active. Um, there's different animals too. I actually had a bunch of pictures of different, you know, geese and sea lions. And the only animal picture I put of the river was the picture of the turtles on the log, which I just couldn't resist, but I was not trying to focus on that. Um, but yeah. Did, did that answer your question, DJ? Sorry. <laughs> okay. Did anyone else have any questions? Hello, Emily. Yeah. Hey, Bob. Hello. Hi. Hi. How's it going? Pretty good. Yeah. Um, thank you hear your thank voice. You. Yeah. Um, that's just nice to see you. It's, I was looking forward to this. Oh, great. Yeah. Really, uh, your first float painting knocked me away. That was really, can you show that again? That's beautiful. Sure. Uh, let's see if I can. So uh, it might be easier just to show it in this view because I can kind of switch around to the different pieces. Um, but yeah, so there's the flow paintings. Uh, there's these ones up here. And the one on the highest one, that was the first one, is that right? Uh -huh, that's the first one, yeah. And then there's, this is the one that I had in the, in the slide. Yeah. Wow, that's amazing, I love that. Thank you. So were you using real non-viscous paint on that and you just let it, you let it flow to make it flow? Um, I basically, um, I took regular acrylic paint and I mixed Elmer's glue with it and some water. And then I uh, mixed, you know, a bunch of paint up into separate, you know, buckets essentially, uh, small buckets and then uh, mixed, dripped them onto the canvas and then they kind of mixed together on the canvas. And then um, they just kind of did what they wanted. Um, and it was a bit uh, messy and uh, chaotic. Um, but the thing that was the coolest, I think, was that I kept getting frustrated because I couldn't quite manage to make the consistencies of the paint be equally as viscous for you know the different colors. And then it turned out that when there was an uneven amount of thickness to it, it actually did way more interesting stuff. Right. Yeah, I, I agree totally with that. Yes. So yeah. it looks like you kind of held it. Um, you know, at 90 degrees to how it's shown here and to let them run along the, the narrow, right? Yeah, it's it's uh, quite distorted looking here. But yeah, I mean, if you kind of see it in person, it's just like, yeah, kind of normal. It's a little, it's a, it, actually one other thing about them is they're not quite, you know, perfect rectangles because they got so uh, wet and uh <laughs> you know, just covered with paint that the um 
canvases and everything would get a little warped like this corner actually does stick out kind of and uh you know they're really i feel like they've really been through something we know perfect symmetry is kind of an arbitrary thing to begin with yeah i guess that's a good point oh oh you know what i am so sorry everyone i <laughs> I'm sorry. Thank you. You know, I'm so glad you mentioned this stuff, Bob. Thank you. Um, one other thing about the presentation is, um, you know, when I mentioned this uh, large painting here, I told you something about this. And, uh, you know, this painting is essentially, it's called The Flow. It is called The Flow. And, and uh, these ones are called uh, Early, Early Flow. And, and with all of my thinking about women's bodies and everything, you just, you can't look at the, at least I can't look at this without thinking about menstruation. You know, I just can't, I just can't help it. <laughs> and, and really, I have to confess that really this painting here, this thing up here, it's, it's what I, what I call it is the, the great vagina in the sky. That's what this thing is in here. And that was kind of like this mystical, um, uh, I, I don't even know how to, uh, I think it's better if I don't really talk that much about it or describe it, but yeah, this, this is the, the great, this is the water, this is the land, this is the sky, and this is the great vagina in the sky, is how that works. So you can kind of, I kind of have this sense of, this is the tip of the iceberg of acquainting myself with with women's bodies through 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 art somehow um so um yeah like there's there's some some kind of magical feeling happening there for me so if that just if that just didn't shut everyone up completely then <laughs> i'll be good <laughs> But yeah, it's. I think. Um, I think I'm. I'm. I'm pretty interested in a lot of these uh, kind of. It's also almost philosophical too of this idea of of combining structure with with this chaotic flowing, you know, and having some really strict constraints, and then also having some other just a free utter free for all that really lets you know all of this this water flow however it's going to flow and do what it's going to do Okay, okay. Well, um, if there's not any other questions, I suppose we can go ahead and wrap things up. Is there any last comments or anything anyone had? Yeah, I love this, Emily. This is great. Very cool. Thanks, Bob. Thanks so much. Yeah. Have you been Have you been in touch with Sarah lately? I I uh, I have just just uh, in this uh, for this show a little bit, um, and. Yeah, it sounds like she was pretty interested in it. Um, she was mentioning that she maybe wanted to do like a separate kind of like interview or something like that. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, I, I, I don't, I, yeah, I don't, we'll, we'll see how that goes. I don't know if it's really necessary. I kind of feel like this was like a really good time to talk about all these things, so. No, you, you did a great self-interview. That, that really worked, I thought. Oh, <laughs> thank you. Yeah, I'm, rela I'm relating to the whole searching, you know, um, A1's going through an interesting time now. We'll, we'll see what happens. Yes, yes. I, 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 I feel like um, this is a very interesting time for creative, for people who are embracing the creative uh, juices right now. I, I think it's... Um, it is a very uh, challenging time, you know, we have so many constraints, but at the same time, you know, maybe there's actually a, 
a kind of a tipping point where the constraint becomes this um, activation point into uh, discovering new worlds really. So maybe it's possible to, you know, really get into some really, you know, interesting new places with, with a lot of projects that people are um, stewing on at home and things like that, so. Well, I mean, it, in a way this, these circumstances give us more permission to do that. Mm -hmm. You know, we we have less with uh, you know with less reason to go in the outside world than where else do you go? You go in the inside world. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you can do it with that. You know, you can do it with less with less FOMO. I think. Yes. Oh, you're so right. Actually, that is a really good point. I I feel a lot of FOMO all the time. I think that's um, I, I wish that wasn't a driving force in my life, but I think it is unfortunately a driving force in my life and that, that COVID has, um, uh, kind of lifted the, the, the pressure of, of fear of missing out. That's what FOMO is for anybody who's not familiar with that term. It's, it is extremely, um, like weighty to me because I have this I think it's I think it's in its heart uh you know with artists it's there's this like part of us that is a little bit competitive partly because that's just a way of being sociable as an artist you know right. like you you just come you sort of compare and you you discuss artistically going back and forth you know so but then there's this element of like oh no what if I missed out I I I'm I don't want to miss out on all the, the good stuff. <laughs> yeah, I just wanted to give you a little feedback, Emily, that because um, of, you know, COVID times, I haven't seen your place. And it's great to see this sort of open studio approach you've taken to your to your house. Um, Thanks. And all the work you've been doing. It's really cool. So and I like the virtual tour. That was a good idea. A good way to do this. Thanks. Yeah, no, I'm I, Emily's sister. <laughs> <laughs> this is my this is my wonderful and famous sister in Marie Schleiner. She's she's like a very accomplished artist and also a video game designer. So uh, I, yeah, may, maybe once I was, but <laughs> no, you you are not you're, anymore. <laughs> <laughs> that's, anyway. No, you're you're amazing. But also, yeah, I mean, it has been really surreal to like sort of be cut off from people, right? And then on the other hand, like there's so much boiling beneath the surface too. So it's kind of, it feels, I, I've had this feeling of like, I have so much creative juices flowing, but no outlet, you know? And um, I really hope other people do this. I really want like everyone to just do open studio um, presentations of their spaces and share all of their, you know, interesting, you know, creative thoughts and feelings right now, because I just feel like it's just everyone's going to be in such a stew of it, you know, right now. So, yeah, I hope I hope this, uh, you know, inspires people a little bit to do this, too, because like I feel alone in that respect, but I also like want that connection with others. Like I want to see what they're working on and thinking about in their creative work at home. So, yeah, thanks for sharing that, Mishi. You're, you're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Did anybody else have any thoughts or questions that they wanted to share? Well, very much enjoyed it. Nice to see you. Thanks, Adios. Bob. Adios. Yeah. Okay. Well, then I will just, I will wrap this up and I will just once again make a plug for, uh, you know, A1 Lab Arts. They are a wonderful nonprofit gallery in uh, Knoxville. I'm just going to open up my presentation again so everyone can kind of see where that is. Um,
so uh, and and A One Lamb Arts is is fantastic space. They have supported so many people and artists and have such a rich and vibrant community. And they recently lost their space, probably in large part because of COVID, I'm imagining, although I heard uh, somebody bought their building. But anyway, um, they're, they're on the move looking for a new location and they need a lot of support. So if anyone can spare $5 to like help give them a lift, that'll be wonderful. And they have uh, helped me do a lot of amazing uh, projects and work over the years. So uh, I'm really uh, always happy to um, be a part of that community and support it whenever I can. So um, anyway, thank you so much for having me. Thanks for coming, everyone. I appreciate you. I hope you stay safe and well, and I hope you decide to do your own living room ex exhibition, and then you invite me, and then we can have great conversations about it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and end this presentation, but thanks so much for coming everyone.